two, one. All right, so let's review solenoids and magnetic fields in a qualitative way. So no calculations, but just understanding and utilizing your right hand rule in order to try to figure out and see how these solenoids work and then how the magnetic field is created, which basically brings about an electromagnet. So first, what you see here on the screen, okay, is the kind of a wire that you can imagine and, and a wire going into the page is gonna have a cross and a wire coming out of the page, okay, is going to have a bullet. Now, um, you can review and I'll put up a link up above there if you like uh, with regards to how the magnetic field forms around just a wire. Here, we're gonna start to wind up the wire. So what we're gonna try to do is the following. So here's a, a really nice kind of a schematic, okay? And also a little bit of a simulation from stickmanphysics.com. I'll put up the link, okay, to this uh, directly in the description. So, you know, this is definitely not my work, it's theirs, but they have captured this in a very nice way. So a solenoid, which is something that you see there on the left, you can kind of ignore the magnetic field, which gets created, we'll try to describe it, is the fact that if you turn on a current and you start to wind things around, okay, so if you have a spiral as it goes through, and you can see there, now those are not electrons that are flowing, uh, notice that it's going from positive to negative, so this is the conventional current, which is actually flowing, so we'll assume that it's the conventional fluid that we have. If you do that and you wind it around, typically, in the center, we might put a kind of an iron, so a ferromagnetic, some kind of a soft core, which we can wind around, and it also increases the magnetic fields okay, within there. So that's what you see there. That's the gray that it gets wound up. But even if that wasn't there and we start to wind things up, we notice and we turn on the current that we have an actual magnetic field that gets created. And this would have been an electromagnet because you're using electricity, Okay, so it's flowing, creating a current, and then it also is creating a magnetic field all the way around, as you can see there. So we're gonna try to explain this concept momentarily. So let's come back to here and make it a lot simpler. So at first, uh, let me remove this into the page, okay, and then let me remove this out of the page so you kind of know what's happening within here. So if you take this and we have a wire, so let's say the first one, which is kind of going right into the page, right? So this is, you know, the one that goes right in. So that's the cross. You know that if that wire kind of like extends out, then what you will have is a magnetic field which forms around. So it's going to create these concentric circles all the way around here. So it's gonna go all the way around, right? So there's a magnetic field that now starts to form. So I'm gonna just draw three. Of course, this continues on and it gets weaker as you have it. Now, the direction of the magnetic field within here is actually in the clockwise direction. So the magnetic field is going to be forming and this is the magnetic field direction. So that's what you would have. Now, if you take the other wire and that wire is now, um, as you can see there, so it's out of the page, right? So if it is out of the page within there, so what you have, Okay, so within, so if this thing is coming out of the page, so this would be kind of out of the page in, in this way. So you would also have, I'm gonna switch within here so it's a different color that pops out at us. So I'm gonna make it green. So you also will have a magnetic field which forms in. Now notice that, it's not exactly center, but let's try our best here. So notice that if you take this in, then what you're going to have is that these things are going to start to interact with each other, right? So as you're going all the way around here, so, oops, that's not what we wanted it. Okay, let me just do that. So this starts to interact with each other. So the two magnetic fields will interact. Now, in this way, so it is not going in the clockwise direction, it's actually gonna be going in the counterclockwise direction, and you can use your right-hand rule, right? So that's the kind of link that I pointed out. So that right-hand rule will be, so now this is going to tend in this direction. So that's the magnetic field. But notice, so if this continues on, so it kind of goes in this direction, okay, in this direction. And the other one, okay, if it continues on, it also, so at these points, okay, notice that it's, they're going to interact and it's going to scale the magnetic field, okay, within there. So that's what would happen. 
Now, if you have this, let me kind of zoom this out, and you start to wind up, because when you're winding things up in a solenoid, so this is what I was showing you right here. So if you start to wind it up, so notice that you know you can imagine these, these are coming in and coming out, okay, so on both sides, right? So and then they're just crossing all the way around. So you can start to wind these things up. And if you would put this, I'm gonna duplicate this around. Let's say that there is another one okay, that goes something like this. And then of course you can keep duplicating these as you're going through. So what's going to happen? Now there's a lot of interaction as you can see here. Now some of these will cancel. So as these guys are going within this direction, right all the way around. So some of those will start to cancel. Um, but some of them are going to start to add up, right? So if, you have, if you're creating these wires going in and then you're creating wires coming out and now you can sequence them all the way through. Now you can do superposition and you can kind of just check for yourself, all right, so what's going to happen with the overall magnetic field? Is it going to add up, okay, or not? Now I am going to utilize, you know, one of the references which I, I love, which is from kind of grade 11 physics and I'll, um, put up okay, the image there and then I'll put up in the description down below where you know they have provided this particular figure. This was on page 560. So notice what we have done here. So this is exactly what I was drawing over here, right? Where you have, so within here, so this is going into the page, okay? This is coming out of the page, into the page, you know, into the page, into the page, etc. I'm gonna just kind of zoom in into this right there. And notice they have nicely kind of just captured within what is going to happen in the superposition principle. And the superposition principle, so if you have these, notice these are the windings that you have. So as this is kind of flowing in, okay, so these are the windings all the way around. So this is kind of in three dimensions, so it winds these, these things up. And you have this magnetic field, so this is on the interior side, so they are adding up, okay, within here, notice the arrows. Okay, are going to be pointing in this direction. And then, you know, as it points out, okay, so it will kind of swing back out. This is the magnetic field and it will continue on all the way around. So you, what you're doing is you're basically creating, so here's your south pole and then here's going to be your north pole. So you have an electromagnet caused by the current now that you have this solenoid, which is these twirlings all the way around. And, you know, if you compare it to the regular magnet, so, you know, you may recall, so this is just your regular bar magnet. So this is no electricity at all. This is just an actual um, magnetic item where here is your North Pole, here is your South Pole. And we know that, you know, you're going to have this magnetic field which gets created. But notice that here, this looks identical, almost, of course, but we can replicate and this has a huge advantage because we can create now a magnetic field within here and we can turn it on and we can turn it off. So if we have a current which is running through here, it creates a magnetic field. If there is no current which is running through, then there is no magnetic field. So we have created an electromagnet which allows us to turn on and turn off magnetic fields, which we can use in various devices. Now I would encourage you, you know, you can take a look, okay, I'll I'll show you one example of these, which is basically how a bell can be rung, you know, the, the doorbells that you know we are thinking of, um, by just simply running a current and then turning off a current. Now, of course, you know, nowadays if we have wireless, okay, so it might work on a different technology, but originally it did work on this technology where we had magnets. But it also comes in, in subwoofers, okay, so you also have electric kind of electromagnets there, which kind of control out those low frequencies. You also can take into consideration, for example, your car doors, which open up and close down. Okay, so that also works on kind of these electromagnets, okay, turning on and turning off or switching in or switching out. So these are very, okay, kind of applicable to numerous items, you know, sometimes even, you know, starters of, of various kinds, turning on lights and so on. Okay, so you can have that. Now, and it all works with regards to the understanding of magnetic fields. And now what is really cool in here is that, so if you look and also into the, you know, into the page and out of the page, so as you're kind of going through in here, um, so you can take a look 
and see how that electromagnet works. And it works on the actual right hand rule where we utilize our fingers in the direction of where the actual item is flowing. And this is really nicely captured that right hand rule in this, okay, which again, I'll put up a link for this. So notice that it goes with regards to the convention um, where the fingers okay, of your right hand twirl around in the direction of the current which is flowing. So this is showing where the current flows and it lines up um, directly um, so within there. So on the top you will have your north, on the bottom you'll have your south, that's going to be the kind of electromagnet which gets created. But of course the magnetic field will look something like this which you see there on the left hand side which is really really um, cool to be able to see. So you can use your right hand kind of rule Okay, all the way through um, that you have okay within here so I would encourage you you know take your right hand put your right you know your fingers I'm actually reflected within here uh, on the screen on the video so you would put your fingers in the direction of the flow you can curl it around because it's a solenoid so you're going all the way around it okay so that's what you would have um, with respect to that so now coming back into this um, so within here, so that is, you know, solenoid, you can see the superposition forming around. And here is one of the examples that you can see. So I'm going to kind of scroll down here. So this was one of the electric bells. So it's taken again um, from the same resource. I'll put up the description. So this is from Nelson's grade 11 um, text. Okay, so here you have a bell. And notice what's really cool is that, you know, we have a switch and if we turn on the switch, right? So notice here is, you know, battery. So basically it's gonna flow. So our current is flowing in this direction. So that's why you see right here, those arrows are showing you where the direction of the current, okay, which is flowing. And if that happens, that creates a north and that will create a south pole, okay? So within here, you know, so within this, so that's gonna start to get attracted. Now notice if this is also a north pole and this is a south pole on the other side, then these are two are going to get attracted to each other and therefore it's going to swing this over because of the um, actual current which starts to flow and it's going to ring your bell, right? So you can do that. Now that's, you know, happens when the switch turns gets turned on. So, you know, if you would switch this on, you can imagine it's like pressing the doorbell, holding it there and you're allowing current to flow for the, you know, X amount of time and then it just activates the electromagnet and then it just starts to swing and goes ding okay and if you want to do it again you know you can press it again ding so it utilizes the actual magnetic fields to be able to do a device like this and of course it happens in other devices so once again you know the way that it works take your right hand you know put it in the direction okay of the current and your solenoid is going to wrap all the way around and as it wraps around, it just shows you on the interior, the direction of the North Pole, right? Magnetic field that you have in there. And it is to do with the conventional current flow. Now, if you wanted to increase the magnetic field, then there's basically three ways that you can do that. So you can increase it by, well, you can increase the current flow, right? So you can have more current that you have within there. So for example, increasing the voltages um, that you have and then allowing for the current to flow. So there's much more current that flows and it will create a stronger magnetic field. You can also have a lot more windings. So notice that the more windings that you have, so for instance, if you only have you know these, where there's only one winding or two windings, there's not a lot of interaction where it doesn't allow the magnetic field to be bigger. But if you start to wind further and further, it starts to increase, so it gets kind of tighter within there. So the more windings you have, the bigger the magnetic field that you're going to create. And then the last one typically is you, you put a, a ferromagnetic kind of, so typically it's some kind of a soft iron core, um, and an iron core actually aligns with the magnetic field. So it kind of amplifies uh, your actual magnet that you have. Um, if you don't have it, you know, you can still have a magnetic field that just may not be as strong. So it's a, it's a nice thing. And it's also much easier to be able to wrap around um, that you're carrying through. So typically the solenoids, you will notice that they are wound around um, some kind of a, a iron 
core that they have on the interior. So the three ways again, you know, you can draw more current, you can have more windings okay, to increase and you can put an iron core okay, or a soft core inside um, depending on what that item is. All right, so there you have it. So that's kind of the introduction to solenoids and magnetic fields. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye everybody.